Section three of Futuria Fantasia, Spring nineteen forty, edited by Ray Bradbury. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lois Hill. Section three Thoughts on the World State by Henry Cutner. I have, as usual, been brooding over the intricacies of modern civilization. It seems to me that life is a peculiarly futile business. This mood of mine may, perhaps, be attributed to my recent tragic encounter with a horse at the corner of 42nd and Broadway. I shall not dwell upon that incident, save to mention briefly that horses should, at least, be careful of what they eat. One never knows the result of the most innocent action, and that, by imperceptible degrees, brings me to the subject of this article. Playing fair with fans, or fantastic decency it has been said and very loudly too that fans fight a lot well i do not care to refute that i happen to know that a californian fan a mr ackerman is in the habit of knocking down visitors and kicking them in strategic places the question naturally arises does fantasy lead to sadism I am reminded of the remarkable case of Scarlet O'God, an ardent fan whose tininess led her to being occasionally called by the diminutive, or Fanny. This may seem somewhat confusing at first glance. Let us, therefore, go hastily on to the next paragraph. I should, perhaps, mention a mysterious white-bearded gentleman called Tarboth the Damned, or Toby, since he played a significant role in the incident it was he who listened toying at his beard idly while scarlet feverishly upheld her position against the onslaughts of her foes just what caused the argument i cannot recall at the moment nor does it matter especially i believe it had something to do with scarlet's being locked out of the sanctuary or washroom by previous arrivals mocked scorned and jeered at scarlet at first said nothing Ultimately, however, she lost her temper and cursed her enemies roundly. I would, she observed with feeling, sell my soul to the devil in order to obtain vengeance. At this moment, the white-bearded gentleman smiled unpleasantly and vanished. Simultaneously, lightning struck the sanctuary and demolished it to the natural discomfiture of the occupants laughing in a triumphant manner scarlet departed but the seeds of doom were already sown within her soul not until she was soaked to the skin did she realize the ghastly and hideous truth then looking up she saw that above her hovered a small black cloud from which rain was steadily descending as she realized the terror of her position black horror flooded the girl she had become allergic to weather well after that of course matters got steadily worse she was driven from home after blasting the bathtub and spoiling a valuable angora kitten it was later made into a muff but moths got into it that however is another story and not an especially good one poor scarlet was excluded from all fan gatherings sunstroke and eclipse were her constant companions she came with the deluge and was gone with the wind. The girl was utterly friendless. She roamed wildly here and there, haggard, careworn, and miserable, in a tattered gown made from the covers of amazing stories. At night people could hear her moaning under their windows, and they huddled closer to the fire, whispering, "'Fetch aft the rum, Darby! Evil walks abroad to-night, and I feel my soul shudder in me. No soda, thanks!' Hopeless and forlorn, Scarlet stowed away on a schooner out for Hong Kong. But she was discovered, cursed for a Jonah, and set ashore on a cannibal isle in the South Seas. It was a blessing in disguise. The natives mistook her for a goddess. They were used to bad weather, and did not attribute the altered climate to Scarlet. So they garlanded her with lays and made her their queen, and she reigned happily ever after. End of section three. Recording by Lois Hill, Kamei, Idaho.